I'm the vice president of the Tech Club. Uh, Paul here is the president. We started this about five years ago, I think, and uh, we uh, were having a lot of fun with it, okay? Um, we, uh, we were called the Computer Club, but we quickly learned that that's really not what we do. You know, it encompasses a lot more than that. It encompasses technology. And it can be everything from cut the cable to cars to uh, smart cars to, uh, um, I don't know, what you know, cameras. That's what we're doing now. It's cameras. So we have no dues. Yay. Thanks for your applause. Okay. <laughs> Do we have anybody that's new here tonight that has not been to the club before? Okay. You haven't been? Okay. So just tell us your name and, and what your interest is. Interest is. Okay, good deal. All right, who else? My name is Harold Cohen, and I've been trying to get to DB for the last three or four times, and haven't been able to do it, but I made it tonight. Okay, thank you. Somebody else back there? The new first time over here? Don Kalovic, and then same with me. I tried to come the last couple of times and just got, just got interfered with, so right. finally made it to one. Okay, back. Marcus Miliera, came to see your presentation on the Okay, good. Well, Mike here, Waterhouse. Uh, Mike Waterhouse, I was here about two years ago hearing about the drones, and I haven't been back since, but I'm back. Yeah. Is that door locked? Oh, we locked him out. <laughs> was there somebody else back here that's new? Okay, go ahead. Frank S. Lucio, um, just moved to Rosa Ranch, Dr. Rondo. Oh, welcome. Thanks. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Go ahead and tell us. That's right. You did. You did. Did you get the invite from? Um, no. You didn't. No. I sent. You gave me your email address, right? Well, maybe you didn't get it right, so I'll check with you later. Yeah, I couldn't find it on the website. It was a different email from Robeson for you. So uh, I think I did it right, but I don't know. You, it's not an invitation from me. It's an invitation. Let me talk about what we do. We have a thing called Groups I.O. It used to be Yahoo Groups. And if you're in the Groups I.O., if you want to become a member uh, of the Tech Club, we just get your email address, and then you get a push from Groups I.O. You don't get it from me. You get that push from Groups I.O. You might check your spam folder or something, but you just accept it, and then you're in. And then what happens is when we do these meetings, we, we try to record them, okay? Then we make the presentation available on on our website. Paul's put together a wonderful website, uh, Robeson, no, no, Robeson Tech dot club, club, not clubs. Anyway, uh, I, we post there, so when the, when the recap's available, I'll just provide a link for, here's the recap, and you can go by. So if you didn't, say you wanted to see this presentation, and you, or you want to go back and watch it again, uh, you just go to, and you don't have to be a member to go to the website, but it's just a convenient way of getting the information. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh huh. Steve Myers on there yesterday looking for the astound one. Was that taken? It's on there. Okay, I just must have missed. Yeah, you have to, you have to kind of browse through them. There'll there'll be an image. You look for the image. Okay, we have an image. Um, Sometimes, a lot of times, I'll get it from uh, Adobe Stock. Okay, but find the image and they'll and then you click on that. Then it'll give you the recap. Okay, and that was a very good meeting. They they did they did a very nice job. Okay, so we've had a stand uh, powered by Grandi. We've had a CGI services, which they broke off from CNG, uh, and we had we're going to have CoServe coming in uh, next month to talk about what they do. Okay, um, not drones, but talk about CoServe in general. Uh, who else have we had, Paul? It was really interesting. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Cut the cable. We usually slam the room, you know, full of people. Everybody wants to cut it, but they can't do it. So anyway, we'll do that again. That'll be coming up in the summertime. So anyway, we'll get started um, as such. Now, <clears throat> here's how this is going to work tonight, the agenda. Uh, we're going to have a, a guest speaker. His name is Scott Kelby. Everybody know who Scott is? He's, a, he's an a outstanding photographer and he runs kelby1.com, okay? And I'll give you his credentials in a minute. So uh, we're gonna play some short videos. This is not gonna bore you. They're like 
three or four minutes long. Now, this is not how to set your smartphone. You may think it is, but it's really not. It's all about the strategy of using your smartphone when you travel, and we'll get into that. So we'll play two or three videos, and then I'm going to give you a statement, okay? And then we'll have a discussion. Anybody wants to discuss the videos, and not, we'll go on to the next one, all right? So he does it in Tuscany, Italy. This is where he's, he actually does this for us tonight. And uh, so as, as such, we're going to watch his lessons with a live discussion to follow. And then these are the lessons we're going to do. And, and again, they're very short, okay? So don't worry about that. And uh, then here's some of the topics. Uh, low light, wide angle, uh, optical zoom, panoramas, and portrait. That's just a few of the things we're going to, we're going to do. And then we're going to have a wrap-up. Any, any questions at the end? You can ask questions at any time. So we'll get started. Okay, so who is Scott Kelby? All right. And I have to go to a different website here. So in. So I'm going into Kelby One. I'm going to go to my dashboard. And I'm going to find him over here. I believe that's the one, not the Tuscany. I don't know if y'all can see this here, probably can't, but uh, Scott is president and CEO of Kelby One. This is the website that he runs that I pay for monthly or by the year, and he's also the original Photoshop guy, okay? He, he sells in Photoshop, editor and publisher of the Photoshop User Magazine. He does conference technical chair for the Photoshop World Conference, training director and instructor for Kelby One Live Seminars, an author of a string of best-selling technology and photograph books. So this kind of gives you an overview of Kelby One. It's loaded with things to learn how to use your camera with. So, and now they're starting to do things with uh, smartphones. So that's what we'll be about tonight. He's the guy on the dashboard. Hmm. Oh, it's off. Sorry. It's a lot of pieces this thing make it work. Buongiorno, and welcome to using your iPhone for your travel photography. We're in a beautiful small village of San Quirico di Orcio. We're in the Tuscany region of Italy, and we're going to be looking at using this as your main camera or your second camera. Now the reason why this makes such a great second camera is because sometimes your phone will do stuff that is a lot easier than it is to do on your mirrorless or your DSLR. And of course there's all kinds of things because it's connected to the internet that we can do that just work better on the phone. But whether you're going to use the phone as your main camera or as your second camera, we're going to cover it all. Now I want to start off. Okay, and I'm not going to finish that because that's more of a setup thing. And we're going to go to the next one, which is lesson three. And this is shoot with intention. Before we start shooting, I want to give you something that I think can make a really, really big difference. And this could be a major thing that affects the quality of the images that you come back with. Now, it's not a setting. It's not an accessory. It's something bigger than that that will really make a big, big difference. And that is this. I know you're thinking, well, I've, I've got this cell phone and it's got a pretty good camera in it. And if that's how you think about it, like, oh, well, I'm going to use this because I don't have my real camera. I don't have my mirrorless. I don't have my DSLR. you got to stop thinking like that. Uh, you know, my wife is very big into iPhoneography and stuff, and she writes articles for magazines and stuff. She's done classes on Kelby One. And, and her big thing, and this really made an impression on me when she said this, you have to shoot with intention. And this is what she means by that. You got to stop thinking of this as a cell phone with a good camera. 
I want you to start thinking about this as a really good camera that also makes phone calls and you can text on it and you can access the internet. It's a great camera that does other stuff. It's not a cell phone that has a great camera. Because the cameras in this, you go back just a few years, this is way better than some of the very, the very first super expensive $6,000 digital cameras. Cameras that were on the cover that shot shots of the cover of National Geographic didn't have this resolution, this quality, or these types of features. That's how far we've come. If you change the way you think about the cameras that you're holding in your hand and start to think, I've got a really good camera that also makes phone calls and texts in the internet, you're going to see the difference in your images. All right, now let's go shooting. Sure. Okay. Okay, so for discussion, these first two lessons, I call this love the one you're with. We're, your camera phone's with you all the time. And we actually have uh, a testimony over here by Mike Waterhouse. Or tell us, Mike, what happened uh, when you were traveling. Tour of Italy from the southern part to the north for three weeks. So when I got to Rome, they're going from the south going north. When I got to Rome, I went into the, I went into the Vatican and I said, hey, does anyone have to use bathroom? They said, you try to find a bathroom? I didn't really have to go, but. <laughs> and I said, I took my belt, but I'm buckling my ball down with this strip, and the camera was hooked onto my belt, and that camera hit the floor and broke the camera. It was just a small Sony uh, camera. But then, for the rest of the trip, I had to use my phone. It's an iPhone 6, this one here, it's pretty old. But uh, I used it like it was a camera. And the first thing I did was I cleaned the lens, because a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. And any time I took a picture, I know that it's extremely still. It just barely touched the, the leaf. And my pictures came back so good from Italy going up to Venice that I sold over a thousand dollars worth of those uh, pictures to uh, tourist tourists. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and, they, and there's other companies that are buying from me. But I looked at them and I, I showed people them and I can't believe that I took it with an iPhone 6. <laughs> yeah. And I was walking along, there were beautiful scenes and people were just walking to get to the bus. You know, and they were just walking past, and they were gorgeous. And I just stopped. It didn't take very long. I just left my camera on a, a curb or something, or up against a tree or something, and just take it very gently, and it was that sharp. So things that you could do with yesterday's uh, cameras, I mean, mm -hmm. phones, or cameras for phones. That's true, and and we're going to get into that in just a minute. But you touched on a lot of points that we're going to hear from Scott about. A lot of good points that we're going to hear from you about. Uh, me personally. I have all these weird cameras, and, and I have a gimbal for a camera. I have a camera that's got 16 lenses, but the camera, I'm using it right now for monitoring this video, but it's with me all the time, so if, if I just grab it and go take some shots, okay, then it's, it's spontaneous, all right? And with, like he, he was saying, like Mike was saying, the, the technology that they have in these camera phones now, with the cameras that are in there, they blow everything away from in that we might have had maybe four thousand dollars worth of camera equipment in the past, and so people want to be able to use their smartphone, especially for traveling. I mean, I've got a backpack that looks like a parachute when I get on the plane. I can't, <laughs> I can't do that anymore. I'd rather take something simple like a camera phone, like he's doing. Now he's using an iPhone. I've got an Android. Uh, if, if we get into any kind of settings, we'll get into a few of them here. But they work the same. It might not be exactly on the Android like it is, like he's showing us on the, on the iPhone, but it's there. They work exactly the same. How many people have iPhone in here? Wow, I'm outnumbered. <laughs> no Android users, right? Do I see that? Okay, I am. So uh, in the previous corporate world, that's what I did. I sold uh, Android phones to the carriers. And so I was always out and about with an Android of some type, uh, selling it to the carriers and promoting it. So I just I can't I just can't get away from. It. I'm just I use a Pixel phone, and and that's what I like, which is a Google pure Google phone, and uh, that's what I use. And it takes some outstanding photos, not so much about the cameras on there, but about how that Google processes them. Okay, you can actually scrub people out of the out of the scene with the Android that I have. If you don't like it, scrub it out. Apple too. What? And he may could do it in Apple. I, I don't know. 
Google's making it available on Apple. Oh, are they? Okay. Well, when I first got it, they were exclusive on that. And so you could actually scrub them out. All right. So the next one we're going to go to is called low light. All right. And then we're, that's lesson four. And then lesson five is exposure compensation. All right. So these are going to kind of be settings for your smartphone, but we're not going to get into a deep dive on that. What's going to happen is next month, Ray Davis from the Photo Club is going to hold a session at night, a workshop, where we're going to get in small groups. So if you don't understand something that you can't get done on your smartphone, come to that. And we're going to promote that as an open event for Robeson. All right? It's a Photo Club, not here. All right? I'm going to repeat this session as a workshop later in the month, all right, for, as a, 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 for the, for the uh, photo club. So we'll probably get some more people there. Yes? Mm -hmm. you, what, What's that? What did, what did you say that was? Uh, honestly, I'm sorry. You, the, the, the workshop for, that Ray Davis is doing, yeah. it's in April. I, I can't remember the date. I, I thought um, you said next week. No, 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 no. No, no, I know he is. It's not this month because he's leaving town. Ray doesn't like these videos. When he came over, he didn't want to do any videos. I said, well, we'll do them when you're out of town. <laughs> right, okay. So anyway, uh, he likes to do hands-on. So that's what he's going to do. Yeah, and it'll be promoted um, in, um, in the newspaper article because I'm going to write one for this. We've still got time. Yep, we've still got time to publish this one. And I'll put the date for that. At workshop, but uh, just stay tuned to the to the emails from Robeson, all right. And if you join our groups, then we can put you in for that too. Um, no, actually we can't. Photo Club doesn't do that. They they just use um, paid membership. That's how they do it. So anyway, long story short, that's what's going on. So that's lesson five, and then go ultra wide. We'll talk about that, okay? And then we'll have a discussion of lessons four, five, and six. Understanding basic camera settings. All right, so let's go to lesson number four, and then we'll do five, and then we'll do six. During your travels, of course, you're going to wind up in a church or a cathedral or a palace or a museum or somewhere where the light is low. And I know what you're going to think. I better put up a tripod or I better put up something like that. You're actually not going to need to because your phone camera uses kind of its version of auto ISO, meaning what it does is it'll automatically allow you to handhold in low light situations and still look really good. Now, if you have a very, very old iPhone, you're shooting on like an iPhone 5 or something, it's probably gonna be pretty noisy, but if you have a reasonably last two or three years, you won't even notice the noise. It'll do a really, really good job. All you have to do is literally turn and shoot. Now, in a dark situation like this, of course, you do want to hold your camera as still as you can, right? You want the sharpest shots. You're still going to be thinking, I need to hold my camera still. But also, what you're going to do is consider using your ultra-wide. If your camera is one of the pro models and has the ultra-wide, the 0.5, this would be an obviously great place to use that. But really, all there is to do is turn and shoot it and do it. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to put it on 0.5. Turn around and shoot. Here we go. Nice. Now, don't forget about shooting from a low perspective. They look really, really good when you can shoot at a low perspective. And you can literally just hold it down low, aim towards there, and use the top button here on your camera to, to actually take the shot. So I'm gonna use this top button, get my camera where I want it. All right, now, if you're really worried about it, and you're thinking, I don't know if I can hold it steady enough, trust me, you can because of the built-in auto ISO. But there are some other strategies you can use. Number one, you could put it on a tripod. You could use either after I showed you, put it on a tripod. Number two, you could use a little card, a little card tripod that fits in your wallet, that little sweet thing. Or you can literally just lean it on something. So you put it on the, in this case, I'm leaning against a pew, so it's nice and rock steady. I can go super wide like this. And if you see the pew, you can here just move it forward and then you don't see it anymore. We can tilt it up and get that shot. We can go super wide and get a nice tight shot of the altar. We can pull back out to one-to-one. -to -one. You have all these. Remember, don't forget to use, you've got three lenses. Let's use them all. There we go. When you're in a situation like this, I have another tip for you because right here at the altar, the lighting's pretty good. When you turn around to shoot the back of the church, we've got a big window up there and that window gets blown out and it looks bad. 
And it doesn't look dramatic and dark like it does in here because it's just, it's going to be such a wide range of tones from the dark interior of the church to this really bright light. It's going to blow out. It's going to turn white. It's not going to look good. Here's how to deal with that. What we're going to do is we're going to go and shoot. Um, and when we do, we're going to tap on the bright spot. So it sets its exposure there. So let's do that. We're going to tap on the bright spot and then we're going to tap on screen and drag down for exposure compensation. There we go. Mm. Now, look at that. Mm -hmm. We keep the detail up in the window. It looks dark and dramatic like we want it to, and we can take the shot. Now, let's also let's make sure we're shooting it raw here, and let's also go extra wide, and we'll do that one. Same thing, we're gonna tap in that middle. We're gonna tap and drag down on screen, get it nice and dramatic like it really looks because it's kind of dark in here, and we can take the shot. There we go. This next one is really, really important, and it's easier to do on your phone than it is on your camera. It's exposure compensation. So let's say that I you know, hold my phone up and I look at the scene and I've got my camera going and it, it's just, it's too bright. It's just too bright. So all you do is you, you know, tap your finger where you want to, to uh, focus on, right? You just tap on screen, I want to focus, and you already knew that, right? But you notice that there's a little sun, a little sun icon beside there. That is your exposure compensation. Just tap on screen, you don't have to actually hit the sun. Just tap anywhere on screen, right? And just take your finger, and if you slide down, it darkens the exposure. If you slide up, it brightens it. So that's it, you just slide your finger down or slide your finger up, and the exposure compensation brightens or darkens the image. This is going to be so helpful and so handy for you. I'm telling you, start using this and you'll start to go, because there's people that don't use exposure compensation on their DSLRs and mirrorless, and then you're gonna go, I never knew how great this was. It's just so easy on your phone, right? So that's it. Any scene that's too bright or too dark, you're a finger tap and a slide away from fixing it. All right, let's move on. If you have an iPhone or if you're using a number of, there's a number of different cameras that have this, but there is an ultra wide setting. It's actually so wide, it is 13 millimeters, which is very, very wide. And it is awesome. And I love it for capture, capturing things like inside a cathedral or inside a palace or something like that. Landscapes, it's, you don't really want to go super wide. You want to go a little in tighter. So, but for certain things, anything that's small, any tight space, it makes it look big and epic and all, especially if you shoot down low with it. And we'll talk more about that. But right now I want to mention, if you've got an iPhone that lets you shoot at 0.5, so if you have two lenses on the back, right? If you have two lenses back here, you have one, which is you know normal, and two, which is a slight zoom. It ain't a big one, it's a slight zoom. What we're talking about is the one that says 0.5. Ooh la la, it's sweet, 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 sweet. But here's what I want to tell you. When you're out shooting, if you've got three lenses, take a shot with all of them. You're right there, right? Tap one, take a shot. Tap two, take a shot. Tap. 0.5 and take a shot. You never know which one you're going to love. And they take up such a little room, especially if you're shooting in JPEG, they take up such a little room you won't even notice it. So I recommend when you're on a scene and you're shooting something, don't just shoot one, don't just stick with one. Go ahead and do 0.5, do one, and do two. But you'll see plenty of opportunities when you can shoot with that 0.5 and it's really, really nice. All right, so that's the super wide angle. That's, that's a big one. And also, uh, I'm going to give you a bonus tip which is when you have that super wide angle out, if you want things to look really epic, get down low. Either hold it down low physically or get down on your knees and shoot it low. It makes everything look big and you get to see the ceiling and whatever. You're, it's great for indoor shots. I really, that's where I'm, I'm gonna use it the most. It's really, really nice if you can get down low. It really helps make things look big and epic. All right, let's roll on. So he, w he goes into some, what I consider basic camera settings, all right, and strategy involving those, all right. Um, I think he has some good points to talk about if you're going to have uh, three cameras on your, on your iPhone, then do all three and take shots. I've never thought about that. I usually just go take one shot, but then you never know what you're going to end up with, okay. You might get a much better image if you're using... Uh, more than one. So that's a, that's a pretty good strategy. And then the exposure compensation. So easy to use. So much easier than my monster over here. There's a lot of settings to that thing. And so camera phone, just it's easy peasy. But we need to know, you know, basic things 
to make it work and make it work quick for us so we can get those great shots. All right. Any comments, questions? Yes, sir. There you go. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having something else that that you're not having. You know, he used the power button. All right, but you know, like you said, if you got a watch, then you can make it go with that, and that's even better because then you don't shake the phone itself. He also talked about some tripods, something you put in your billfold. I think they make some little something uh, that you can do. That. I actually have it on that uh, this tripod here. I can hang a phone on that. All right. And use my camera phone on that if I want to take images. But then I got to haul that around. So you got to think about what do you want to haul around. You know, uh, if you're traveling, uh, travel light. And uh, you just got a new phone, right, Betty? You just got a new iPhone. And uh, so, um, you know, it, it's if that thing's loaded with the uh, capability. And even going back two or three generations, they're loaded. So it's just something to consider uh, if you want if you are going to be traveling. What do you really want to take? Do you want to take a bag full of stuff and you look like you got a parachute on? Or do you just want to put something in your pocket, all right, and take it there? I just think it makes more sense. Any other comments? It's awesome. What's that? It's awesome. Awesome. Great presentation. Well, thank you. There's more to come, so don't give me. You, you can hold your applause yet. <laughs> Question here. Yeah, it was. And you know, I got all these lenses and stuff that I take. I don't really travel anymore other than what I call a land cruise. You know what a land cruise is? You get in your car and you go. <laughs> no TSA, no pre-check, nothing. Throw the pups in the back and here we go. But, uh, you know, when I, when I travel, and, and I'll just give a pitch for the drone club, my favorite camera device is a drone and it, because it has a gimbal on it. Anytime you put a gimbal on something, it changes everything. But the problem you have with the drone is that you don't always have good weather. I mean, I wanted to fly it yesterday for the food trucks. No way. I could get over to Justin and I'd never get back. You know, <laughs> just kidding. It wouldn't, it wouldn't come back. It'd be a flyaway. So you are limited with that. All right. But I also have a gimbal that I can put the phone into and I used it for the photo club uh, banquet. And I was going around and taking some selfie, selfies and taking photos. Only problem is I let the battery run down on my phone. Okay, bah, dumb. So when you you got to check these things before you go out. Make sure you got plenty of battery power. If you don't, get you one of these little very uh, slim power banks. You can get them at Amazon for like next to nothing now. It's ridiculous. And then you can put that with your phone. I think there's cases now that have additional batteries in them, right? I think my wife has one because she's notorious for letting hers go down but it puts a case on it and it has an extra battery somehow. So there's a lot of ways to, to do that, but just check and make sure you have plenty of battery power. Steve, All right, yeah, comment? sure. Uh, it's so important, I've been doing photography for about 50 years. Come on up here, we'll get you in there. It's so important uh, to hold your camera still when you're taking a picture, and that applies to the iPhone or any phone you've got. So if I was taking a picture of the group of you here, I'd put my camera like this, I put on something solid, mm -hmm. and then when it comes time to press the button, you see all these people and they go like that. You'll see them standing there in a crowd, and they'll be taking pictures of a beautiful scene, and they're going like this because they hit they hit the button too hard. And as soon as that camera moves, when you bring it up, it's going to be a little blurry in the, in the detail. So if you've got something like this, or if you can stand up against the wall, lean into it, and get your arm, get your get all your arms blocked over, and hold. And just like with a rifle. What you do with a rifle, you take a deep breath in, and then you let half of it out, and then mm -hmm. press the trigger. So when you're using your phone, do the same thing. If you, especially if you have any kind of medical condition where you're a little jittery, uh, just take a deep breath in, let it out, and just gently press that button. And uh, it'll make all the difference. If you blow up that picture on your computer, you can zoom into it with your pack shot. You'll see every leaf, every detail. Now, the, the wide setting on iPhone, One of them probably didn't charge. <laughs> well, when you're taking a picture, take one the way you usually do, and then use some some of these techniques, and take a second picture. And when you get home from home, you'll be surprised. Thank you, Mike. 
Yeah, I, I find what I do is I'll, I'll just hold it next to like a cabinet or a tree, like you said. Hold it that way. But you've got to make sure, me, I can get my fingers in the lens sometimes. <laughs> make sure your fingers aren't wrapped around the lens. Any other comments? All right, let's move on. So the next three we'll do will be optical zoom, all right, short video, then photographing food. I, I, people like to photograph the food when they travel. I don't know. I don't do that, but they, they put it on Facebook, you know. Here's the pancakes I had, you know. I go, what? You know. But anyway, and then <clears throat> panoramas, which is kind of cool. So you get a, a wide, wide angle of something out there. So he shows us how to do that. All right, so we'll do these lessons, and then we'll have a comment at the end, and that's camera settings that Trump, that's not ex-president, that Trump the DS, DSLR, okay? In other words, these are things that can really make a difference, okay, out there when you're traveling, all right? All right, we'll get started with optical zoom. In the last lesson, we talked about using that ultra-wide lens, right, the 0.5, if you have it on your phone. And whether you have it or not is immaterial because <laughs> I want to talk about this next thing, which is only using optical lenses. So your, your phone, every, every phone, has the one-to-one -one view and a two-to-one -one view, right? You have two different views. But you think, well, Scott, can't I just pinch on screen and zoom in? You absolutely can. And it usually will look pretty bad. So at that point, you're not doing anything optical, you're doing a digital zoom. So it's kind of just zooming in on the pixels and it usually makes the image look kind of soft and grainy. And if you've ever tried it, you know what I'm talking about. Now, you might be fooled because when you're doing it, you'll see the screen says two, right? And as you zoom in, it goes two and a half, three, four. You'll see the numbers go up and you're like, oh, this is great. There are certain instances where you can get away with it. Like every once in a while, you take a shot, you've zoomed in and it looks okay. But my general advice to you would be, try to stick with the one or the two or the point five. If you find yourself pinching and zooming while you're in the camera app, while you're in the camera app, if you find yourself doing it, knowing as I'm pinching and zooming, I'm degrading the quality of my shot. Just keep that in mind. It's looking worse. I'm getting closer, but my shot's going down the tubes. All right, let's keep rolling. We've got a couple more little settings to do. Okay, now we're going to go to 11, which is photographing food. That's what my wife does. Every time we have a dinner, she's got to take a picture and send it to her daughter. <laughs> I was reading a story once. Uh, there was a, a restaurant here in New York, a very famous restaurant, and he had suddenly started getting a tremendous number of complaints about cold food and cold uh, service and all that. And uh, so after about six or so months of that, he got frustrated and he decided to Wow. I don't get it. Uh, Ray liked this one. You know, he and I sat down and went through them, and he actually helped pick out most of these, Ray Davis. But um, he thought this was apropos. I, I never photograph food with mine, but a lot of people do, and it's mainly for sharing on Facebook. You know, here's where I went. You know, I went to Dunkin' Donuts and got me a donut or something. I don't know, but anyway, here's what Scott has to say about it. All right, look at this. We can get really, really close in there. And by the way, once you're really close in, and it's still looking as it's in focus, you can hit the 2x. Whoa, <laughs> that's <laughs> some big bam. Uh, so somewhere in here, right, somewhere in here is going to make a nice picture. You do not have to show the entire plate and everything. We get the idea. It's a sandwich. Look at that. Ooh, sandwich. Same thing with the coffee. You, can, you don't have to get the whole thing to get the, you know, we get the idea. It's coffee. All right. So now that's, that's one way. Uh, if you do it from up where you normally see food, it's not nearly as interesting, I don't think, as if you get in really, really tight. However... There's another thing you can do that's very, very popular, and that is to shoot straight down over the food. And there's a feature inside the iPhone that makes this work really, really well, because it's designed for this. What it's designed to do is when your phone is exactly flat and perfect, you have a crosshair. You have a white crosshair and a yellow crosshair. They're off 
they're off kilter and then as they get perfectly together boom you know it's perfectly flat so let's take a look all right here we go see those two lines when they come right together it's perfectly flat and you're ready to take the shot now i need to get make sure i'm back at one to one there we go let me get right over it get the things to line up boom do you see how it turns a solid yellow that's when you know you're right over it let's just do the sandwich there we go we're right over it or we can get the whole table here maybe right there got it but the biggest tip for all this believe it or not isn't what happens in the camera or how you shoot the food it's what the lighting looks like here's the secret to getting great food shots number one either do what we did sit outside sit outside in a shady area or under an umbrella and the light will look good or sit directly by a window ask to sit by a window if you're inside the restaurant there's going to be so many different light sources you're going to have color issues it's it's going to be a mess but it can be so great if you sit outside or by a window you'll get absolutely beautiful light and food looks great backlit so if the food is backlit it'll look great if you're under out, outside here in a nice flat lighting it's going to look great it's just if you're, if you're inside the restaurant your chances for success are very very low so you know step one is sit outside or near a window you're halfway there then just use those techniques get in real tight don't have to show the whole plate and shoot straight overhead using that crosshair you're all set yeah, my wife takes a picture of her plate first and while she's going back to the kitchen i'll take a few bites of mine and then she'll take a picture of mine and we send it to our family and we say which one do you like best so that's the one with the bite <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is panoramas, um, panorama, or ramas. Remember at the very beginning, I said there are things that your iPhone can do that it just, just does a better job than your DSLR or your mirrorless. Panoramas, panos, for short, is one of them. You don't have to take your image over to Lightroom and try to stitch it together and then crop it or fill in areas. On. It does it all for you, and it's so easy, but I want to give you a couple of tips about panos. The biggest tip that I can give you for successful panos is don't go too wide. In other words, don't take the whole scene and go all the way around. And Because what happens is you wind up with this very, very, very thin pano. If you put it on an Instagram, it's this big. If you put it on Facebook, it's just a tiny little pano. It just really, it loses all the wonderful impact of a panoramic shot. So what I recommend is go a little ways and stop. That's number one. Number two is just try to hold the camera steady, right? But also, you'll occasionally get a warning that says, slow down, slow down. What I found is you don't really have to slow down. I think it just says that because it's bored. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a pano. I got a couple little tips to show you about panos that are important. But let's go ahead and start with just taking a standard old pano. And you're going to see I'm not going to go too far. I'm just going to go as far as I need to go, and then we're going to stop. So let's go ahead and we'll do this right over here. Here we go. We're gonna, I know I'm gonna zoom in to two times. There we go, so we're zoomed in nice and tight and let's hit the word pano and just keep the arrow on the straight line. You can go fairly quick and I'm only gonna go to about, I don't know, there. That's all we need, but let's take a look. You tap the little corner there and look, you got a nice full pano of the city without going too far. Now, another thing that you can do that I found works really well is instead of swiveling your whole hips from left to going all the way to the right and swiveling like that, one thing that I found that works better is to kind of hold the, the phone more flat. So you're not going from here to there. You're kind of holding it flat as you go this way. That works better. And I want to show you one more. The other tip is, well, I got two tips for you. The next tip is you can flip your pano to go the other way. All you have to do is when you're in the app, let's go back to the camera app here. When you're in the app, you see the arrow? If you tap the arrow, look at that. Now you're doing right to left panos. So you don't have to go from left to right, that's the default. The other tip is this, and this is one that people miss a lot. You can do vertical panos. They're wonderful for travel. If you're standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, if you use a wide angle lens, the Eiffel Tower is gonna look this big. But when you use a pano, not only do you get a sense of scale, but you also have a very large picture that you can print very, very large. And where do you print panos? Ready? On canvas. 
and you print panos on canvas, they'll make a canvas any size you want. Like they go, here are the standard size for prints, but if you want a four foot long print that's the size of a pano, good luck finding a lab that'll do it. But if you go and want and get a canvas done, you want a really nice canvas, really, really high quality, like you're doing it for a client, go to artisticphotocanvas.com. If you just want one for the house and like, oh, I just want it to look pretty good, and I want it to be really, really inexpensive, go to canvasdiscount.com. It's not plural, canvas discount, it's just canvasdiscount.com. Get on their newsletter, because they'll send out a newsletter every once in a while, and they have deals that are 90% off list. I've, I've gotten 30 or 40 done from them, not just panos, but all kinds of prints and different stuff. Mind-blowingly low prices and pretty good quality. Now, let's do a vertical pano. How do you do a vertical pano? All you do, turn your phone vertically. So instead of going across this way, you're gonna go this way, you're gonna go straight up. Now there's a building over here we're gonna switch uh, so I can shoot over that way, but I'll just show you, here we go. Vertical pano works the same way. You just go up and done. And you take a look here, tap it, and you've got this very, very large, very, very high megapixel. Did you ever wonder how Apple used to put images on the sides of the buildings in Los Angeles? Like they'd be a 30-story building and there's this giant thing and a pano. Big panos, big giant panos. So that's how they do it. So remember, turn your phone sideways so the arrow is pointing up. And then we'll just, here we go. Hit go and just go straight up. Holding it steady as you go and stop. And again, you don't have to go that far. And there you've got this very, very large, large image that's tall. Now, the building I shot here wasn't that tall. However, you get in front of something like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, or you get in front of the uh, you know, Eiffel Tower, it looks great. Well, that's Panos in a nutshell. It's really, really pretty easy, but there are some good tips that'll make a big difference for you. I like his strategy on panos. Uh, some things I'd never thought about that he's he's suggesting do instead of try to do the whole thing, you just do half of it, you know, and that way it doesn't make them squeeze down like that or squeeze down like this. Uh, some very good information there on how he's doing that in panos. And uh, when you're traveling, you know, obviously you might want to take a, a harbor, you know, or maybe at a resort or something. It's a good way to capture those images. Um, the optical uh, lesson very important because people think, well, I just keep zooming in, zooming in. No, you're gonna you're gonna come out of the optical into a digital, and then that's it's gonna look like it's gonna look terrible. It's gonna have lots of grain, and it's not gonna be something you're gonna use. So you got to be careful with that. And then we had one more, didn't we? Uh, forget what it was. Eleven. Yes, sir. If you have a group and want to take a picture, you can start on the left with the panel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's always a jokester. Any other comments? Uh, the photographing the food is interesting because uh, I never thought about taking a shot like that. He's showing how. Did you were you able to see the crosshairs up there? I know. I, okay. Yeah, it's interesting if you if that's something you want to do. Um, again, I, I don't know. That's true. That's true. If you want to do documents as such. So. There you go. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Very good point. Okay. So uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to do lessons um, 14, 15. Let's see. 14, cleaning your lenses. Important. Portrait mode. Important. And then top tips. We're going to do 14, 15. And 18 and that'll wrap it up for us and we can have a discussion on anything you might want to have at that point so this tip is going to sound like a very simple tip 
but I'm telling you what, it catches a lot of people. <coughs> what happens when you don't do this is you wind up with your photos looking a little soft, they don't look really, really sharp, and you don't know why. It's because your camera lens is dirty. That's why I always carry in my back pocket, I always carry this little black cloth. And by the way, this little black cleaning cloth came with your phone. This is the one that came with my phone. I had it for a long time. And so uh, you pull it out and just clean your lenses because your lenses, it's in my pocket, right? You throw it in your pocket, maybe you're throwing it in a purse or whatever. Can you imagine how dirty they are? I mean, when was the last time you cleaned it? Clean them in a circular fashion, just like that. And you go, oh my gosh, it was filthy. Of course it was filthy. It's been in your pocket, it's been in your purse, it's been in your, who knows what, in your car, whatever. It's a simple little tip, but it's bigger than you think it is. Before you go shooting for the day, clean it. Clean it numerous times during the day and your shots will be sharper and cleaner all the time. So you probably know that your camera has portrait mode, right? And it's obviously great for taking pictures of people because it puts the background behind. But what happens is, because it's named portrait mode, people don't think about using it for other things. But you can put the background uh, out of focus behind all kinds of things. You can take a wine bottle, or in our case, you can just take a beer bottle in a not very nice looking, particularly fancy cafe, and just put the background out of focus and it makes a huge difference. Now I want to show you the difference. I'm going to shoot the beer bottle and the beer glass. I'm going to shoot them with the regular lens, and then we're going to switch to portrait. And when you see the difference, I hope it'll put in your mind, all right, when I'm traveling, I want to be able to take these shots and put that background out of focus and make it nice and creamy without having to worry about, it's not a person. It doesn't matter if it's a person. It just matters the mode. It does a beautiful job of giving you that look of using a very low f-stop on a mirrorless or on a DSLR, but you're doing it on your phone. So here's the one in regular mode. All right, now let's switch to portrait, take the same shot again. Oh, that looks a whole lot better. So that's what I'm talking about. It really is a big, big difference. And so next time you're out, you see like, oh, there's that beautiful wine glass sitting on the table. Switch to portrait mode, not just for people anymore. All right, it's F. Okay, and the last one is 18, which is uh, top tips. I've got some quick final tips for you just to wrap up the class, but these are important things that I want you to keep in mind. The first one is this. Don't forget to shoot the people. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that you want. You don't want to come back with a bunch of shots of empty buildings and empty places, and it just feels empty. When you do your travel photography, make sure you take lots of photos, and if you get a chance to do a nice portrait of somebody, don't forget to switch your camera to portrait mode. That's number one. Number two is don't forget to change your perspective. Most of the time when we shoot with our phones, right, we're standing in a standing position and we're taking them like this, right? We're shooting like this. If you shoot everything from eye level, it's all going to look at eye level. Anytime that you can shoot from up above, you can go up a staircase, up a couple of flights of stairs, from a second story of a building, or get down low on one knee, oh my gosh, it makes a huge, huge difference. When you change your perspective, it makes the images much more interesting just all the way around. The next tip is one I learned from my friend and Kelby One instructor, Mimo Badani, and that is for getting reflections. If you see a little puddle of water, get down low and put your phone right at the edge of the water. You don't have to actually put it in the water, but put it an inch from it. When you shoot into that little tiny puddle, it will make a huge reflection and you'll be stunned at how great it looks. So keep an eye out for a little puddle anywhere. Get your phone down really, really low and you'll be amazed at what you get. Remember the app I talked about called Even Longer? We talked about using long exposures for, you know, getting rid of people, right? Just letting it go for five minutes for a scene with people walking by. As long as everybody keeps moving after five minutes, they'll all be gone. So that's how we shoot, you know, uh, monuments and places that are full of people. Five minutes with a long exposure, that's gone. But we think about it for fountains and for water, making silky and smooth water. But here's another thing I want you to add to your travel uh, portfolio. And that is showing motion. Just think about doing maybe a 10 second exposure while people are walking through a marketplace or people are walking somewhere. And you'll get that motion as they go. But just remember, you want to set your camera on something stable while you do a long exposure. Even if it's just five or 10 seconds, you know, you either want to use uh, you know, a tripod or something to keep your camera perfectly still 
Leave it open for five or 10 seconds where people are walking by and you're gonna love the, the motion that it brings and the excitement that it brings to your photos. And my final tip is when you're shooting outside, let's say that you're walking around a city, if you can get the sun to touch the edge of something, so you put your phone up and you look and you see the sun touching the edge of a building, you'll get that little spike of light and it really can look really, really nice. Otherwise, what you get is just a big ball of light, right? That doesn't look very good. But if you can get the, the sun to touch the edge of a building, now that will require you to, to move until you can get, okay, wait, I gotta get right there where the sun is just touching the edge of a building or the edge of a roof line or something. You get the spiky line, it looks great, but you gotta wait until it's touching the edge of something. Give that a try the next time the sun is clearly in your shot, you'll love the results. So lessons 14, 15, and 18. Uh, 14, clean your lenses. We already heard a testimony from Mike over there, right? First thing he did was clean the lens on his camera phone. And then the I'm other... Sure you some of them get, my wife, she takes her phone everywhere and her purse and everywhere. And every couple of weeks I look at it like, oh, she's got it. She's drawing you into her dessert. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something you don't normally think of doing. Uh, especially like the one on portraits uh, where you can create a, what they call bokeh. And that's where you're you're making something in the background out of focus, and just using the portrait lens. I never I didn't know you could do that, and so that was interesting. Yes, sir. Uh, if you're shooting the reflections of the uh, SLE, they'll be about something that. Do you ever see a green dot coming along? That's the laser from your autofocus. You might want to get it out of the way because it really ruins your <laughs> Okay. Anybody else with a comment? The tips and tricks. I thought it was interesting. I wish he'd have shown more examples in there rather than just talk about it. It would have been interesting if he'd have pulled up some images as such. Uh, this is a great lesson. There's more than what we showed you tonight, but you'd require membership to Kelby One. I think it's about 20 bucks a month or something like that. Well worthwhile. There's so much, so much that he has with so many instructors. So, yes, sir. No, not really. I did purchase an OM5, which is a gimbal, and we used it at the uh, banquet, and it worked real well until my phone ran out of power <laughs> at the end when I'm making the awards. But when you put a gimbal on anything, in my opinion, you haven't flown drones for a long time, that changes everything. And with the OM5, you, you've got a selfie stick, so you can hold it up, and then you can, you've got a button to flip it around so you can walk around, you've got a buddy, and it'll take the shot. So, you know, it really is an interesting add-on device, but not for everybody. It took me a long time to figure out how all it worked with the buttons and how to make the camera work and how to sync with the software, the special <laughs> software that we're actually using with this uh, recording. So that's what I do. I like add-on devices like that. Apps, you know, not so much uh, on that. Um, you know, it's just... Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you really got to know what you're doing in the camera settings, and that would probably be more of an accomplished uh, photographer, you know, like Mike. Mike was a pres you were president one time, right, the photo club, and uh, he he actually helped uh, set up the window. Did y'all get that set up today? Okay, good, good. We encourage you to go by the library. We have two monitors in there, and they're running images all the time. The one on the left is some of my images and uh, the contest winners and entries for January. And the one, who, what are we doing this month in there on that other one? Uh, and, uh, that excursion they took over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they, they went out with the accomplished uh, photographer, Canyon Lands, right? Yeah. And um, he's coming to talk to us uh, next Monday night, in fact, Russell Graves. And he is just fabulous. Uh, and they're, he's talking about taking people either to Caddo Lake, small group, or to Davis Mountains. So he'd be there if you're interested in coming and, and joining our dues are 20 bucks. And um, you can hear him be worth $20 just listen to him talk and see what all he does. And he's just, he, he's a great guy. Great guy and he's very accomplished. So, all right. Okay, 10 bucks, all right. 10 bucks, I'm sorry. I, I, I've, got the, I've got the Ultram membership, you know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't remember these things. 10 bucks. Uh, a year is all it cost, 
and then uh, you get access to, um, if you want to enter contests, you can do that, take your images and enter them um, as such. Or if you just want to supply images each month for the monitor on the left at the, at the window in front of the library, I'll incorporate them with mine. And we have a theme each month we do with that. And, you know, that's just for fun. And you never know what you're going to see on that thing with me. So it's, uh, it's something we have fun with, and uh, we really enjoy it. And Mike can help helps put that together. Now, if you're uh, interested in coming to the Photo Club meetings, there's, you can just come as a guest. Mm -hmm. You don't have to join. That's right. Just drop in to anyone. You might just want one or two of the, of the programs a year. Mm -hmm. Just interest you. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're free to come and go. Mm -hmm. We'd like for you to join because uh, we think yeah, it has value for 10 bucks as such. We think the drone and the tech club has better value because we got no, no dues. <laughs> but because of the dues that the photo club collected, we were able to get the 4, uh, 4K projector. Okay, so they helped uh, pay for the mount and the screen they did pay for. So uh, we just put in a capture request. Uh, I was the one that went in front of the Inquisition Committee. <laughs> But I knew how to pitch it this time versus the first time. And, and having it access to uh, three clubs rather than one made all the difference. And bam, here it came. I was shocked. But they put it right in. So hats off to uh, Rhett and Shelby for making that happen for us. And, and the main thing is, you know, we can turn the lights off. We weren't recording. And we get a lot more resolution. But we, can, we get a lot more room in here for events, you know, if we're going to do cut the cable or something um, as versus the our friend over there. So anyway, uh, that wraps it up for me. Any any other comments? Yes, Sam? Yeah, I haven't been using my phone as a primary camera, so I haven't really paid close attention to the pictures. It's just snapping quickly, and then they, they're going to the cloud. But I use a, a life-proof um, case, and I'm noticing now that the covering over the lenses is really diminishing the quality of the photo. So what do all of you use for both protect your phone, but at the same time allow the lens to be on. Well, most of the cases are, are cut up with a lens. Yeah, so you need to cut out. Okay, so a different case will eliminate yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yep. You don't want anything covering that lens. That's it's exactly what's happening. The lens has a lens has a covering on it anyway. Yeah. That's not the lens. So just about any of them are like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you all have a gorilla glass covering that one. They have that. They have that glass cover. My phone tends to hit the floor yeah. frequently, so what do we have to dispense with? What kind of cases? The oh, uh, otter, I think is probably one of the toughest. Otter? No, otter? Okay. Uh, we'll call it an otter box. I think that's what the life proof, didn't otter buy life proof or the other way around? Or, yeah. yeah. They okay. put a rig around it. Yeah, what rig around it? What well, was really new to me tonight was that you're controlling which lens you're shooting through by mm -hmm. which one of those yeah. settings you're hitting. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that at all. No, I didn't either. And, and I just assumed when you when you zoomed with your fingers, it was doing whatever needed to be It's magic. Done. Yeah. But, Not necessarily. Yeah. Uh, I like the fact that he's saying take shots with each lens because you don't know what you're going to use. You know? So that was a good takeaway for me on this. Anybody else with a good takeaway? All right. Well, we appreciate you coming. All right. Uh, we meet the uh, second Monday of each month, except for uh, July and August. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, August and December. Uh, those are we consider travel months, but it gives us a break too. Paul and I. Paul, you got anything that you want to no, share? We got next month is CoServe. CoServe. CoServe is going to come and talk to us about uh, their services, and. Uh, um, should be a good meeting. Uh, pretty much we've covered every service out here by, by the end. <laughs> you know, I can't think of anything else that was between Astound and CNG and um, CoServe. We'll have them all covered. I know we've had people ask to get a carrier out here like T-Mobile. That's kind of hard to do as such. Um, you know, I, I come... You can't get any reception when they come out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well... Then there's that. <laughs> It's you know, Ken, if, if you're looking at hotspot type wireless reception, one that's really, really below the radar, and it really shouldn't be, but it, but it is, Dish Network, are you familiar with them? Mm -hmm. they, they bought a lot of spectrum. Really? And they didn't fulfill their commitments. Okay. And uh, that spectrum is going to get given back to the big carrier.
say this, but they started this thing called Project Genesis. Hmm. $25 a month, unlimited, and they piggyback on Verizon's AT&T network at a fairly high priority. Wow. $9 Visible from other businesses. Visible, Verizon, and uh, I've read where they have a lot of yeah. this No this customer is, service. Eclipse Power. It, Genesis, unbelievable. And I've traveled around the country with it in my motorhome. Hmm. Get service all the time. Eclipse. Hmm. It, 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 no, sorry. Uh, Genesis. Genesis. Project Genesis. They, again, don't have websites. They don't have anything, but it's owned by Dish Network. And I think they have phone service as well, and I think it's about the same amount, about $20, $25 a month. And I get reception here in Roseland, and uh, Ray, Ray uh, has it as well. And uh, he, he, uh, he lives at the opposite end of Roseland that I do, and he, he can get reception on his system as well. So Project Genesis. I think I'd like to have a program in the future with it, something like you're talking about, yeah. as well as with the... E, uh, Elon's, uh, what is it, Star? Starlink. Starlink. Uh, uh, yeah. Rick Du Bois, I think he bought one. Ray has one, yeah. Yeah, Ray does? Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe Ray would come and talk to us. But he uses on his boat in, out in the harbor up around uh, uh, Vancouver. Yeah, it's coming yeah. big time. Yeah. So, so the latest thing with Starlink, you can't use them on the water anymore. Oh, really? They're geofencing. So if you, yeah. have, if you have a, a mobile version, Yeah. Extra. Well, he you, you got to watch what these guys do. Too. Yeah. In in regards to using yeah. using yeah, but they're going to use Starlink satellites. This, this one uses this the emergency. Right. If it's switched on, is using satellites to get the real satellites. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, well, Elon has what five thousand satellites yeah. up now, and I think yeah. Jeff Jeff Bezos <coughs> only has about thirty, so he's he's kind of behind. And he's, yeah. <laughs> They're all going to have dollars. It's more than that now. It's $499. <laughs> for the, for the, the dishes. For the dish, yeah. $499. Yeah. I know, it's a lot of money, but, you know. Ten years ago, motorhomes, the, if you wanted to have a satellite dish for internet, the only purveyor was Viasat and what have you. Those for your motorhome were $10,000. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Unreal. Well, as my dad used to tell me, you only go around once. <laughs> that doesn't work with my wife. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for attending. <laughs>